today I'm going to address what will be one of your keys to happiness. Here's your story, let's begin. The world is fine, come on, dive in. The future's here, it's right before your eyes. Okay, so you arrive in Ecuador and you find a place to stay and you're going to go out and explore and do all of those things and uh, you're going to retrace some of the steps of some of the things in my video. You're going to go down to Vilcabamba and laugh at the hippies and have a good time. You're going to uh, travel to the small towns. You're going to check out the Inca ruins. You're going to go to the museums. You're going to go to the restaurants. You're going to go run through the park. You're going to do all these wonderful things. And there's plenty of them. But when you get home and you're tired and you want to kick back, or maybe it's just a rainy day and it's a little cool and you want to bundle up on the couch, what are you going to do? You can read a good book, which you will do, but you're going to want to sit there and watch a movie or maybe one of your favorite TV shows. And how are you going to do that without breaking the bank? So we're going to talk about that. You could be larger than life, bigger than the world, living out the hopes and dreams of every boy and every girl. You could fly. When you get here, you're not going to, probably, you're not going to be aware of some of the options available to you. For example, you're going to look at cable TV. And what choices do you have? You have a couple choices. But the one you're going to recognize will be DirecTV. And so you're going to sign up for DirecTV. You're going to have good internet. You're going to try to find fiber optic and all of that. And you're picturing I'm going to stream my Hulu and my Netflix. I'll have cable TV. I'm going to have all that I need. Well, think about this with DirecTV. It's there and you have basically the same channels you would get in the US. The downside is many of those channels are Spanish only. Yeah, I know, English programming, American programming, it doesn't matter. They take out the English and they put in the Spanish. And where some you have an option, many of them you don't. And so you flick to your favorite TV show and it's in Spanish and you don't know what they're talking about. Sometimes you can get subtitles, sometimes you don't, because, I mean, think about it, it's for the market here, which is Spanish-speaking. And so for the few thousand, ten thousand, all of Ecuador, are they really going to put a lot of money into some of these programs? So it's a frustrating thing, and I don't, I don't know all the nuances, but that's what it is. So you're going to get... Direct TV, and you're going to find a lot of things aren't there. You're not going to be able to watch uh, your football games, or if you do, the announcers are probably speaking Spanish. And so there's lots of little things like that. So you're going to pay $100 a month for something that doesn't have that much for you to watch. You got Netflix. Well, think about this. The Netflix that you receive here is not the same Netflix you get in the USA. Now, it's going to be the same account, the same, you don't sign up for a new one, it's the same pricing, but the programming is different. The programming is geared for a Spanish-speaking audience. And so you're going to see movies on there from Mexico and from Colombia and that sort of thing that you never would have seen before. And you're going to find that there's a lot of things that were in the USA that are not available here. For example, you might come with a list saved of things that you want to watch that no longer exist. Hulu, forget it. If Hulu Plus is a, is a great thing in the US, it's not going to function here. Now, people say, well, I can sell you an IP setup and it's going to make it look like it's from the US and all these things are going to work. Yeah, you can do that, but it's changing constantly. And so you pay somebody to do it today and next month it's not working again or two months. Eventually it may not work at all, but do you really want to go through the hassle of having somebody come to your house and reprogram your router and pay another subscription for another service 
just to find in a month or two it's not functioning. So that's not really a good, a good way to go. So what are you going to do? Now I can hear right now people that are looking at this saying, Oh my God, TV's not that important. One of the things of being here is get away. Look, if you're a TV snob, that's fine. But think about the history of this. TV snobs came about in the 60s and 70s when TV programming was pathetic. I mean, Gilligan's Island, seriously? I mean, yeah, you can be a fan of Gilligan's, uh, Gilligan's Island, but I, it clearly was just a mindless exercise. And it was shows like that that gave TV a bad name. On the other hand, there's thought-provoking, wonderful TV shows. Some of my favorite are on the History Channel or Discovery. But a good movie is good to watch. And who doesn't like The Walking Dead? So let's not be a TV snob. You can't always be out doing things. Sometimes you're just going to kick back at home with a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or a hot chocolate or whatever it is that gives you comfort and you're going to bundle up and you're going to want to watch something interesting. So set aside the TV snob. You know, there's a few out there, but most of them, it's a front. They complain about it, but then they go home and they watch TV. So TV exists. It's a good thing. It's a good, it's a good alternative when you just want to kick back. Hey, you could be larger than life, bigger than the world, living now. Choices. You can get local cable, like CNT, I have that. I'm actually going to cancel it. It's just the, the menu's in Spanish and I'm, I get tired of trying to translate it. And the, the shows are in Spanish and, it's, and there's very little on it. So, I mean, what's, what's the point of having it? So, yeah, I have Netflix, that's pretty good, but I've had it long enough where I swear I've, I've probably seen most everything on it. What can you do to get programming without breaking the bank and having access to the things that you like, whether it's the UK or Canada or the United States? Cody. Now, you can purchase here the Amazon Fire Stick from somebody who loads Kodi on and you're going to pay, I don't know, 70, 80, 90, 100 dollars, something like that. Or you can pay somebody to come and do it for you, but I'm going to give you a little clue. When you come here, bring a Fire Stick, maybe bring a couple of them. They're very useful and they're only, what, 30 dollars, I think? For the fire stick. You can do it yourself. You go on YouTube, um, I'll, post, I'll post a couple links, and we'll walk you through step by step of how to load Cody onto your fire stick. It doesn't take a genius, you don't have to be a computer person, you can just follow, click here, do this, go there, it's very simple. And you put it on there, and now you have access to everything you would get on cable and it's free. And the IP addresses don't matter. You can watch network channels. If you like to watch Survivor on CBS, you can watch that. You can watch it live or you can watch old shows. You can say Survivor, what is it, 20 some seasons probably? They're there for you to watch. All of these things, movies. Uh, the movie Logan was just out. It's actually available on Kodi. Now, granted, it's, it's kind of a cheesy copy and I'll wait a few months to where there's good versions of it. But my point is, everything that you can imagine is there. You will never run out of things to watch, whatever it is that you like. Whether it's the Bake Off show or MasterChef or some cheesy comedy or whatever it is, it's going to be there. It's in English. You can set it up 
so it's in Spanish, or you can set it up so you have Spanish subtitles, or you can put it in Spanish and have English subtitles. Those things are option choices, depending on the, the show itself, of course. So those things are available if, let's say, you're married and your partner is from Ecuador then you can put it in English and have Spanish subtitles or, or something like that. So, Cody is free, no subscription, makes programs available from originating from the United States or Canada or the United Kingdom. They're all available. If your favorite show is something on the BBC, you're going to find it. So, that's this is probably the most useful tip long term because I mean seriously there's there's a lot to see here but where are you from think about where you're from I'm sure there are many things to see hey, you could be larger than life bigger than the world living now Planetariums and uh, nature, whatever's, and those kind of things. But as you live there year after year, do you really go visit those those things constantly? At some point, you've kind of seen it all, and there's only so many times you can go back and look at a waterfall and that kind. Of, yeah, it's nice, it's beautiful, and sometimes the urge hits. But you're going to find that your list of things that you want to do starts shrinking. You know you could.